Teacher Academy is when we all get together and have the opportunity to grow and learn as a community. Ongoing professional development is is primary to get your teachers to actually build themselves and be able to teach at a level that we need them to teach at. We have mentors and presenters from all around the world and they bring interesting topics to school so that we can learn sitting down together with them. It leads to us uh, developing some new ideas and new possible projects that we might be able to work in with our curriculum as we go through the year. And so it's not just a bunch of English teachers coming together and thinking about something, but it might be what does a math person think about an English idea or what does an English person think about what would be oftentimes inherently a math idea. The other side of that, the benefit for the universities, is they get to see how some of these things are being implemented. This is part of what it is to be at Ross, to be a Ross school, to comfortably engage in conversations about really interesting, complex, and at times challenging ideas. In the end, that's what makes us different. I would say it's one of the elements that I value most about teaching here. This planet is ours for a long period, but the entirely new phenomenon is the impact which humans begin to have on their physical conditions. We're teaching cultural phenomenology and that embraces everything from quantum mechanics to astrophysics to, you know, chaos dynamics. I want to take you back into the neurobiology of emotion and social interaction um, and what uh, we're currently discovering about the nature of self and its relationship to the so-called default network. What I think is going to be the real difficulty in transitioning to a sustainable human species through education is trying to get kids to understand a complex system of world economic relationships, trade relationships, political relationships, where my ecological feet are not imprinting here, but they're walking on the backs of subsistence laborers around the world. Can we stretch the idea that we're part of a single family, one species, and even stretch it beyond that to extend to our evolutionary family, every creature on the planet, and begin to understand we live in one biosphere? I think about Jeremy Rifkin every day that I teach. The lecture that he gave us, I read his book, and I returned to uh, the lessons that and the challenges he gave us every day that I teach, empathic civilization. I really saw him as sort of the logical next step of what our great students will do, that they'll connect the world and think about those human connections in a way that will solve some problems. Carl Safina coming and speaking to us was very inspiring. And when I'm trying to teach you know, young children about climate change and get them to understand the impact in a way that's meaningful and rich, using some of his imagery and his words was really helpful. Every one of those animals that we think was worth saving with Noah's Ark from the Great Flood, they're all in mortal danger now, and their flood is us. My relationship over a series of years with Terry Dolan, the English uh, mentor, was highly beneficial, not only looking at words as far as, as from an English side, but also culturally. And if you look very carefully um, at the way your children, the young ones and the older ones, speak and write, you'll see you have a classic case, a natural neurological progression from parataxis to hypotaxis. I think it was maybe a week or so with the HISO map. That almost generated an entire year of integrated projects that we have, how the science will be working on certain things, and how the reading and writing and also the speaking and listening teacher can be working on something directly related. And the most valuable time in August is when teachers can work together to construct learning experiences either integrated ones in which the whole team works together or even you know individual ones that might be parallel to lessons that are being prepared for an English class or science class. For mathematics in first grade, what are you doing about creativity? List a number of things that prove that you're actually paying attention to creativity in mathematics in first grade. Some of the other things uh, have been touched upon, like for example, cross-cultural awareness. We barely mentioned that, but it's really a big facet of uh, mindfulness of self but for mindfulness of others that needs right. to be uh, brought in. If I'm working with the Mandarin teacher and I'm studying Shang Dynasty that year with my fifth graders, the Mandarin teacher can give me a whole new sense of what the culture is and what I can do to support 
true understanding for my students. In the spring of last year, I was invited to construct a narrative thread about sustainability and how we teach that in the curriculum. And so we spend a lot of time trying to construct learning experiences and concepts and projects that we want the students to be working on. Hi you guys. Hello Carrie. For grade 12, being the entire spiral, I think thinking about the curriculum as you know it and, and how you think that that should be fleshed out for the grade 12 thread document. What are the specific concepts and learning experiences that kids get related to right, sustainability mm -hmm. in the 12th grade? It, it is all based on a kind of umbrella notion of ecology, mm -hmm. of, a, of, a, of a society's ecology. Systems thinking, a new way of thinking about world cultural history, current events, and the systems that we live in using the metaphors of complex dynamical systems theory. The complex dynamical systems course is a class that uh, was developed in collaboration with one of Roscoe's mentors, uh, Dr. Ralph Abraham, who's an, a mathematician. The idea of uh, dynamical systems theory is really kind of deeply embedded in the Ross curriculum. This year we, we talked about uh, chaos theory and complex systems to understand historical, cultural, social, physical systems. There's the instructive value of creating the model itself, and then there's the instructive value of using that model. That language and, and those concepts and the ideas and the conversations that come from them, I think are immediately valuable to schools. And next week we're going to try to make a model of the feudal system. And what I want to do today is try to create a complex dynamical system, a model of how the feudal system began, how it grew, and how it blew up, okay? The term that I'm gonna use for blowing up is bifurcation. Two reasons why the medieval era, era ended, religion and new technology. Because the plague, because the plague caused all these ideas. Exactly. This would link to this, this would link to this, and then this would link to this. And that's when we start to um, introduce the idea of feedback and internal dynamics of systems. And remember our definitions here that we went over yesterday. Variable, stuff that flows through the system. A stock is a place where stuff builds up, right? A link is a connection between two stocks, and this link can flow both ways. The more guilds, the more people are literate. The more guilds, the, like the lower the percentage okay. of Mm -hmm. That's used for cultivation. You're not just satisfied with one answer and a quick answer, and, and again, you're not teaching that either. What we wanted to do is have a lived experience where they would compete with one another and try to, to incorporate the concepts of Machiavelli within the game. You're all nodes in a system. All of you are city-states working with and against each other. And there's links between each other, but how weak are the links? To my mind, the media studies curriculum that I'm helping develop the Innovation Lab at Ross and uh, initiatives like the Project Circles all contribute to an atmosphere in which anything really can happen. And uh, teachers have to update their knowledge uh, in order to uh, remain relevant. If anybody enjoys teaching, they also enjoy learning. It's absolutely essential, not just because it makes you a better teacher, but because it fosters a whole culture of dynamism. Conceptual understanding and critical thinking skills, all the educational research shows that those are predominant skills for being able to function as a 21st century uh, individual. And at Ross, by learning in such a way and investigating in such a way, it really helps students to be able to understand and problem solve. As educators, our job is not necessarily to present information to them. The teacher's job is to help them figure out how do you process it. Hard to say what world we're preparing students for. You need to think about universal skills like problem solving, like collaboration, like creativity. Those things are, are not in danger of being replaced anytime soon. Let's think about our planet. I mean, you already know what's good and just at home or what's good and just in your classroom. And let's extend that understanding um, to another level of abstraction. And I, th I think that raw students embrace it and, and they are, they, they're excited about getting engaged. We're asking them to think in and honor their own sense of spirituality. We're making great people that are going to go out and create this empathic civilization.